o'clock. It is Tuesday night. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It is the DJ roundtable time, and roundtable is here. And as always, we want to hear from you. So make sure you smash the like button. Make sure you follow us on YouTube if you're watching us on YouTube. If you're watching us on Twitch, make sure you follow us here and give us some love. Go over on YouTube and watch it on YouTube to repeat. It is the same exact things here. If you're not watching this on, on Twitter, on, on, on Twitch, and you want to watch this on YouTube, please go over to Twitch, follow on Twitch, where we do it live, and we take your questions live. If you can't do that and you want to add questions on YouTube, go down below, ask your questions. We want to hear your questions, critiques, criticisms, tomfoolery, or anything else you want to say down below. And we want to get your feedback on what we're doing. And don't... Be afraid to tell a friend about the show. It is greatly appreciated to share the love and share the show with your friends. And hopefully we all uh, can learn something as well as share our knowledge. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, tonight. We had some comments from the last time on our last show. And those comments uh, are always great to have. And I always like reading the comments and so forth and so on. Uh, let me open it up. Uh, let's see here. All right. So we actually have a question and some comments. So the first question is from DJ Aga. Um, and he goes, I got a topic for you all. The need for power conditioner versus a surge protector is, is there a big difference in quality of sound? I bought a Furman M8DX conditioner and torn if I want to use it or return it and just continue using the good old surge protector. What is the options and what, uh, what, are the, uh, what are the opinions on the need of a power conditioner? I can tell you that you run into dirty power at a lot of facilities, especially older buildings. Um you have power coming into the building, and if that circuit is borrowed on other things, could it be a coffee maker, it could be anything else that's on that circuit, it draws power and it can create what's called dirty power. And you can hear an audible hum of speakers. I use the Furman uh, power strips, which have a filter in there. Um, is it as good as the M8? No, the M8 is more of a rack unit to have multiple plugins. That has a much better conditioner in there than versus the power strip from Furman with a very basic conditioner in there. Um, but if you're looking at anything for conditioning, again, it's one of the things that it's not a bad thing to have. It does eliminate a lot of hum due to dirty power. With that said, we got DJ Brantley coming in now. Uh, with that said, I know we were talking for a few seconds beforehand if a, a power strip versus a conditioner. And Matt was very adamant and very passionate on this one. Matt, go ahead. <laughs> Tell me what your thought is power conditioner versus strip. I've spoken with electricians that are professional electricians and audio engineers, and they say that those are the biggest waste of money in this industry. Uh, all power is like, that little box is not going to clean up your power or make anything more constant. It's just as good as using a $10 power strip. Almost every power strip is exactly the same. Um, so the cheapest one is going to be just fine. Um, you should get one that's got a thicker gauge wire coming out, obviously. Uh, but in all honesty, I mean, my buddy runs a production company and he's got about a hundred of the cheapest Amazon basics power strips and plugs a lot of stuff into them and they're just fine. So if you guys want to, it's, it's one of those things where it's a placebo effect. You think you're getting clean power because you have one of these boxes. Hey, you know, if it makes you feel better, I've never personally run into bad power. I wouldn't know what it is. Um, every venue I've been to has always had perfectly good power. And I use nicer power strips that are like 20 bucks. You know, they're Belkin. They're rated against power surges for up to $10,000 in insured stuff. So if something were to happen, um, I finally had one break on me god after like five years six years and that was because i think i dropped something on it like a co2 tank i don't remember um but it somehow got crushed and two of the ports didn't work but 
those power strips are I, I don't I don't know. I, I, I think they're kind of a waste. Okay. Okay, cool thing. Power strip or conditioner strip? Well, I have the SS6B. I don't know if you would consider that a power conditioner or a surge protector. I don't know. And I run my entire DJ setup off that one. Yeah, the one that that buddy is holding his hand. That's the one I have. I run my entire DJ setup on that one power strip. I never had a single problem. And, of course, we do have older buildings. I have no problem using the SS6B. So, power strip. I would definitely go with well, the... This, uh, this is power. more than a power strip. This is a conditioner, too. It doesn't have a big conditioner oh. in it. It does have some conditioning uh, uh, conditioning parts in it. So, you do have some regulation in this for uh, for conditioning. Oh, yeah. It's the, the big one that he has is the rack mount one that has, like, I, I want to say 10 or 12 plugs in the back. You actually have a power strip, uh, power switch. And I think, did he say, yeah, XD. The MXXD has also tells you how many voltage is coming in off that outlet. So it'll tell you, you know, 120, 119, one, so you kind of get an idea what you have your voltage. And I think you could switch it over to, um, switch it over to amps as well, if I remember correctly. But the other nice thing is it has two lights that come out and you can light up your rack below. So if you have microphones or inline mixer, you can light the area up below it and again, uh, do things. But that is a rack mount unit. So it's designed to go into a rack versus the power strips here from Furman. That right there, it's a little bit more easier to move around. Like I have that, every single one of my um, controllers, my CDJs, uh, every single one I have plugs into one of those. Even I go back to um, my Denon controllers, which I have that in 19 inch racks because I have a 19 inch mixer, my my D uh, my DN 2500, my CD player. Right below that, I have a Furman pull full power unit like he has uh, below that. So I know the one he has, and I love that unit. And I, again, I've heard a difference between the two. I've heard one with hum, one without, just by plugging into one of those. And, mm -hmm. you know, his friend, his electrician saying that, you know, it, it's a placebo effect. I guess I'm I'm guilty of that. But uh, you're and more along the lines. Just, and to let everyone know, when I first started, I was a DJ uh, about four or five years ago. I used Chinese-made power straps. I never had a single problem. They were from commercial electric, general electric, people like that. And I never had a single problem. Yeah, the, again, I don't see, unless you have a lightning storm going off or something else that's going to cause a surge, um, I wouldn't worry about too much about the surge part. I, it's more or less the clean power part for when you have sound coming out of your um, when you have sound coming out of your speakers. And again, I, I've heard the difference between a hum and not having a hum there. So I'm going to go to Jeff and ask Jeff, uh, do you use a power conditioner or are you just using regular power strips or was your well, first of all, that that hum you're hearing, it's a uh, that's a ground. You just need a ground lifter. That has nothing to do with uh, with the uh, clean power. Um, I mean, that is a transformer that is bad somewhere. And uh, I get around that just by plugging in a uh, a ground lifter, which is just a three prong three prong to two prong, simple as that. Um, but if there is dirty dirty uh, electronics somewhere, you're going to get some noise. Uh, I personally use the Trip Light Isobar too, and they're just uh, they're about forty bucks a piece. Just a simple plug in, two plugs on the outside of it, and uh, it uh, it's a surge protector. It does do a little cleaning of the uh, of of the signal, um, but it's not you know any expensive. I've got two of those, one for each uh, run of cable uh, that I plug in. I usually try to run two different circuits, you know, especially if you're running subs. Uh, so I, I have two of those. 
Um, so yeah, no, I don't spend a lot of money. I, I'm not a, you know, one that has to have the, uh, Furman, you know, conditioner in a rack that, uh, that, you know, it, yeah, it is probably a placebo effect. It, it may do something, but for the 99.9% .9 of everything we do, it's probably not gonna, you're not gonna notice a difference. And as far as cleaning up the audio, by the time you uh, crank your subs up and you crank your tops up to 120, 125 decibels, uh, you know, you're not going to notice much clean, anything clean and unclean. It's just loud music and, and thumping bass. And that's what, uh, you know, that's what I use. The FS, yeah, I used the SXB on my last gig log and I had it straight in my house power and I had no problem. So <laughs> I get what you're saying. <laughs> So yeah, for me, it's uh, just a simple surge protector. It's all you need. Uh, get one with that that cleans the power a little bit, but don't waste your money. Okay. So Dwayne, what do you think? Do you think power strip or do you, with a surge protector, or do you think to go and keep the power conditioner firm and unit? Uh, I rather never give it much thought. I have all three, so a lot of times when I'm outside. I'll take the, the firming thing that you have because it's made out of metal. And to me, it just seemed like it's more sturdier as opposed to the um the regular plastic um st power strip. But I do use a power strip to like plug in my computer and all my other digital, you know, devices. But then I also have a rack mount firming that I take like when I do our school um assembly. So I have a zillion things going there. So to me, as far as power, anything that's going to get you power, I don't have a particular reason why I use each one. But as far as the hum, I also use a Hummix, one of those, the black, it's like a black thing that you plug into the wall to take care of like um, amp um, hum and stuff. Yeah, the uh, ground lifters is one of, I always check out cables. And that's one of the things when you run into a hum is you check cables, you see if they're connected right swap the cable out it's always you always trying to do the basic stuff first you know mm -hmm. ground lifters i have those as well when you plug that in you plug you replace the cable you still have the hum there it's on one speaker not on another it's not the controller because you know everything's working right there then you plug into a power conditioner and you're like oh it's gone now there's something there causing no noise whatever the power conditioner does whatever little magic it has or whatever Again, you, you you try to do things basic stuff. And, and Jeff is 100% right. Once the volume goes up, no one's going to notice that. But when you walk by and you hear that light little hum, you're like, hmm, I don't like that. <laughs> but it is very, very true. You know, when you get the volume up there, uh, most people, 99.9% .9 of people will not hear that unless they're walking by and no one's doing anything, nothing's going on. DJ Brindley, we missed you last week. Unfortunately, uh, you had a wedding to work last week, correct, sir? No, I was down. I had to take the kid for her annual uh, go to the Wisconsin Dells for a few ah, days. Dells, that's it. Okay. Right before school starts. And wh where's your so, apartment yeah. crime at? Uh, in her room with one of her best friends. We get a sleepover tonight because school starts this week, and we're <laughs> we're burning up all the free time she's got with activities and stuff. Oh well, not a bad thing. Yeah. Oh, well, there she is. So, of course, she's got to come and say hi. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I'm used uh, to kids. I work my kids every week. Mm, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? Not sound bad. She she needs to enjoy her summer, enjoy her time. Oh yeah. You know, and we we are most of us are parents, and we know how that is. And I'm sure Jeff remembers when his kids were a little bit younger. They're still, you know, he's got what you have one in high school, right, Jeff? Or two in high school? Correct. Yeah. So one he in middle and one in high. So he he he's he's a little ahead of you, but not by much. And he's probably remembers those time when they were 10, 11 you know, trying to enjoy summers. And still, even in high school, they want to enjoy summers. They're a little bit more hands-off yep. at that time, but, you know, enjoy the time when you can with your daughter as well as you know, oh, yeah. enjoy time with your family and friends. So what about you, sir? Do you think that a power strip is good or do you use a power conditioner? What is your thought of it? Because both my main booths are rack, like I have a rolling rack case, uh, for one of my booths, and I've got the toad in the other. Because of simplicity, I opted to have uh, two radial engineering power conditioners in mine. And off of them, each one, yes, I do have power strips that run off of those, just because it 
ex, you know, not that I need the extra outlets. It's easier to have them coming out of the back of the roll, the toad or the rolling rat case, so I can just access all the ports quicker. Have I noticed changes? Yeah, I definitely have noticed when I, when I use a power conditioner at certain venues and haven't before. And it could be the ground lift. I don't know, but I've no, I don't. I've noticed that I don't have any real buzzes or anything since I started using the radio engineering ones. So, if it, whatever it's doing, I like what it's done. And until I find something better at a better price point, I'm sticking with them. They haven't done me wrong in, gosh, three, four years of using them, of using the radio engineering power conditioner. And with that, one thing I like about those is they have a port on the front of it so you can charge your phone. So I can USB and not have to give up an outlet somewhere. And it also has three outlets on the front. So if I need to drop an iPad in last super last minute because I need a song that I can, and the internet's not working on my computers or I need spotty, which I've been more and more, I've been bringing in a second computer, but I can always have three extra ports sitting in front of me if anything goes wrong. And that was a big added bonus with the radio ones. And that to me is, you know, having a flexibility anytime in power, doesn't matter if you have power strips or conditioners, having multiple outlets open. And this is one of the things I do if you guys do the same thing. I always try to keep an extra outlet or two open for photographers or videographer, because sometimes we as DJs, you know, we hug the wall behind us and we take up, there's two outlets, we grab both outlets and we don't leave an outlet open for a photographer or videographer to plug in something to charge up. So like their, you know, be it their uh, battery or be it whatever it is, a light or whatever, having an extra outlet open for them is also nice to do, nice to have. And one of the things, a very inexpensive thing I bought from Home Depot uh, and I have a bunch of them, they're basically a three-way splitter on an outlet. So they're orange, they have three, you know, 120 outlets, they're grounded, and they have a single 110 uh, outlet, uh, 110 Edison plug on the other side, grounded. And you plug it in and you take one outlet, you turn it into three. Now, most of our equipment these days are very energy efficient. So LED lights, stuff like that. Something you're not going to worry about overburdening that outlet. We do that quite a bit, you know, and it works out to be nice. And having that extra outlet it's not only the flexibility for that, but even in areas that, let's say you got to share power with an uplight and with a speaker, you can at least split it into two. And then you have that third in case you want to run another outlet in the outlet, uplight in the area or another light in the area. It gives you some flexibility. So it's one of the things I would yeah, definitely yeah, would say yeah. add to your repertoire and add to your inventory is a splitter. Uh, again, power strips, they're, they're great to have. Having more than one, I would definitely would say, you know, have a few of those. I have I have regular power strips um, in my uh, in two of my cases. I have regular power strips because again, if you want something to just have a surge protector and you're charging up, let's say a phone or you're charging up something else, it's nice to have that you can just plug in and use it. And having like you know these little bricks here for charging phones to the USB port, uh, there's some of them that have multiple USB ports, two or three. And what we do is we have a we have one of these that has like three or four outlets on it, and we have in plugged in one for an Android, one for an Apple, and we leave the third one open in case you need our Android Apple. And a lot of times people will come up to you and say, "Hey, do you have an extra plug to plug in?" Hey, you know what? What's your phone? Oh, you you have Android, USB C. Okay, fine, great. Oh, you have an Apple here. Here here's you know Apple. And you can plug it right here and, and charge your phone right here, and it'll be right here. And I can I can I can keep an eye on it for you. Oh, thank you so much. It's another way again. I don't charge our customer service. I don't charge if it's a. I, I won't charge their phone if it's an Android. I won't touch it. I won't let them use my electricity. Oh wow, man! <laughs> you Apple guys are tough. It's, you gotta have an iPhone. I I tell people all the time. I don't like booking clients that don't have iPhones. It's so much harder to work with them. I can't tell if my messages are sent. I can't send videos. I can't send PDFs. Like it's just so much easier if you're all in one ecosystem. Yeah, Android's a bigger ecosystem. So why don't you join the bigger ecosystem? <laughs> <laughs> two two okay. weeks from now, they announced new iPhone too. So I know. I'm keeping my iPhone. I love my iPhone. 
it's great. It's a wonderful device. Yeah. And again, you it, there's other ways. There's, there's lots call. of ways of communicating with people. There's apps and so forth and so on. Right. Uh, Instagram right. is great. You know, send messages yeah. back and forth and video and pictures. I know, Matt, you sent me some pictures and video of when you drop your uh, gig logs, which, by the way, if, you, if you're if you watching, if you haven't done so already, the links are down below for everyone here to go to their channels and make sure you, fo you know, follow them on their channels, watch their gig especially logs. My, uh, yeah, especially my channel, because mine really needs help getting started back. I well, try yeah. to comment on your channel to get more traction, but even if it's a negative comment, more people are going to be. Yeah, I hate it. I, I hate negative comments. Only positive comments, because if it's a negative comment, I'm going to be deleting it, and I just can't take it. Positive vibes only, and then oh, Jeff, positive comments only. There you go. Positive vibes only. Jeff just dropped oh, yeah. a gig log for his uh, gig on his channel. So, and uh, Brentley just put up a gig log not too long ago as well for a car show he did, which was pretty awesome. Some awesome cars. Um, but he turned off the comment section by accident, I guess, on that video. And hopefully he turned it back on. It's back on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I got I got I always like when I go into people's videos, I I I try to watch as many videos as possible. Um, support everyone. And the the big thing is that I always try to say, hey, you know, positive things as always. And you guys could attest to that if I watch one of your videos, is that you know, hey, great, you know, I always point stuff out that that is, you know, awesome things. Because the fact that people are always quick to say, oh, well, this is wrong. Well, what about the positive side of things? What about the good things that they did? Is everything perfect? Is everyone perfect? No. But the thing is that, again, I'm going to support everyone here. Nice to try to support other DJs, period, throughout. Is there critiques? Sure. We every critique everyone. And then we're going down a rabbit hole that we don't want to go down. We want to make sure that we support everyone, support all the other DJs. So DJ Mikey Mike from Pennsylvania is in the chat. He said that uh, good evening. Uh, no way iPhone is, like is the way. He is another Apple fan. And he also oh, yeah. said that he liked your channel, Cool Thing. So you have another subscriber. Uh -huh. Adrian E is here. And uh, I don't know if he's following you on YouTube as well. Cool Thing Entertainment, as well as make sure you follow everyone else on the tubes. That is greatly appreciated. And also, we got a. From Mike, uh, he had a couple comments from the last video. And okay. So he was talking about the last video about uh, what was going on. Uh, we did contact the venue and the manager and said the only thing we're not allowed to use was our subs. This is the one, if I remember correctly, that he had... Um, two Behringer speakers up high about 10, 15 feet off the floor to cover the whole entire room. Uh, we were talking about this uh, last week. Uh, cool thing, uh, Dwayne and myself. Uh, they could they can use, uh, they couldn't use subwoofers. And that was a Wednesday prior to the wedding. Then Saturday, the venue dropped the bomb on him. So originally they said, yeah, bring your own stuff in. And then all of a sudden it looks like they dropped the bomb on him and say, no, you can't bring anything in. Um, and then he also said that he guess he's uh he's he's um he's by I use both Mac and PC. So he's you know he uses both Mac and PC computers. And of course he has an, uh, an iPhone, so obviously he does a lot with Mac, but he uses both Mac and PC computers on stuff. So you know, again, going back to the PC part, which is better one or the other, you gotta do what you feel it's best for you. And I know that um you know, again, everybody keeps releasing new stuff. Apple releases their stuff, uh, new phones, new everything. So, again, you want to get the newest, coolest thing, that's entirely up to you. So, go on to the next subject here, uh, going from the power conditioners. And, again, we were talking about that earlier, uh, power conditioner versus a power strip. And I think the the room is divided that still. So again, you got to you got you got to do what's best for you, my my brother, and figure out you know what do you want to do? You want to return that strip, that power conditioner uh, rack unit, or you just want to get power strips or whatever. Whichever way you do it, it, again, I don't think you make a bad decision. You just have to decide what's best for you. Do you want to lag around, lug around a big piece of equipment, or something smaller and more compact? It's up to you. Um. Going on to our next question, uh, which is something that 
I'm sure that happens to most of you guys uh, when you do events. Um, when you're out there doing an event and all of a sudden uh, the either the uh, banquet manager or the couple or the um, person in charge of the event ask you uh, prior to the event, uh, what would you like to eat at your event? And I know some DJs don't eat at the event. They say, hey, don't feed me. Usually Tracy and I we usually are like, hey, you know, unless we're really forced to, we try not to because we're there to work. Uh, I'm not going to waste away. Uh, <laughs> so I don't need to eat, <laughs> uh, water and, uh, some pop. That's, that's all I look for. You know, get, give me a Coke and give me some water and I'm happy. Um, but when people come up to you and say, Hey, you know what? We want you to eat and stuff like that. What do you usually do? Do you usually say, Hey, you know, like myself, I can't have alcohol. So a lot of the sauces that people have like on chicken and stuff like that can't have, I can't have that. So, I usually tell them just give me chicken fingers like the kids are going to have because they're easy to eat. I don't leave my equipment because of the fact that I do everything live. So give me some chicken fingers, some French fries, and some barbecue sauce. I'm happy. And there's some fruit. Hey, you mean bonus. Um, I'm very happy with that. But what do you do when someone can ask you what do you want for food or do you even eat? So, Jeff, I'm going to start with you because I know you do a mix of school, corporate, and wedding. You have a big mix there of everything. What do you usually do when they ask you about food? Uh, normally, I will eat um, while I'm playing music. I mean, I don't usually sit down and put it on auto mix. I, I prefer not to do that. I prefer to play every song, you know, individually. Uh, it just this past weekend, you know, they had a uh, it was catered. They had, uh, you know, North Carolina barbecue, uh, hush puppies, uh, you know, tea. I usually bring a cooler with lots of uh, my own, you know, choice of drinks, usually like Powerade or Gatorade. Um, and I, this past weekend, I brought like one of these, these sparkly nice sodas. Mm -hmm. I got this from Costco. Um and uh, and then just a plain water. I usually pack those in a small cooler. I keep it under my under my booth. Um, but yeah, they were like, get get something to eat. And I'm like, yeah, sure, I will. So everybody else was eating. You know, there was no dancing. I was playing light music. So yeah, I grabbed the plate. I went over. I put the plate on the um, chair behind me. And you know, I would um, turn around every couple minutes and grab a bite, and then turn back around and pay attention to my board. Um, that's how I prefer to handle it. Um, I'm there to work and I don't want to be seen as someone who is enjoying the fruits of, uh, what everybody else is doing because they're not getting paid. You know, I'm getting paid to work. So, uh, I don't want to sit down at a table and, 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 you know, talk to people that, you know, I don't know. So I'd rather just, uh, if I'm going to eat quick and dirty, man, just, you know, for me, it was just a fork and some barbecue and a couple of hush puppies. And, you know, I didn't get anything else because, um, you know, it's all I needed. You know, it was one of those days where, you know, I eat lunch at home. I, I load my gear up. I head to the venue at, you know, four o'clock, start playing at six o'clock, um, play till 10, 1030, uh, tear down. It's midnight before I get home, 1130, quarter to 12. Uh, you know, that's a long time to go without a little something in your stomach. If I know that I'm not going to eat, I'll throw a granola bar or two in there and I can, you know, eat those at some point during the night. So just in case, uh, I don't want to go that long without putting something on my stomach because, you know, you get cranky and um, you, nobody likes a cranky DJ. <laughs> no, no one likes a cranky DJ, no. nor a drunk DJ. Oh. You know, that's the other thing, too. Um that's I've, I've seen a few of those and not good when especially hearing from facility managers talk about drunk djs never a good thing um yeah that's never why i never drink yeah, that's why thing, I, never I, don't, drink. I don't know i don't know if you do it jeff or anyone else does it i have a one of those uh i can't remember what they're called but they're basically a steel uh stainless steel uh water jug 40 ounces insulated uh got off of amazon um and I fill up with here in my refrigerator. I have uh, one of those nice Samsung, you know, uh, uh, French door refrigerators that has ice and water in it. 
So I'll put ice in there, water, and I'll put uh, basically uh, and Tracy does it for me. She'll fill up with ice and like three quarters way with water, and then the other quarter, um, simply pure lemonade. Put that in there, just a quarter of it. It's it's a little bit a sweetness. It gives a little bit of a tartness to it. And it's that way. It's not just plain water because I'm just not a plain water kind of guy. Um, yeah, I, just... I use liquid IV uh, in my big big bottle. That's what I take. The liquid IV is a uh, powder that you just mix with water, and that's good for keeping you hydrated, especially on a hot day. Uh, this I past see, weekend yeah, was ninety. This is, what, this is what I use. It's in the low nineties here, so I needed that. So that was one of my first. Two hours, that's all I drank was the liquid IV. Then I went on to other, you know, sodas and that type of stuff, uh, Powerade. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that, that's that's huge, especially, you know, you want it to taste good, but you also need hydration. Yeah, the liquid IV, I, I've, I've had that before. It To me, it's a little salty. I know there's salt in it to hydrate you, keep, you know, keep water in you because IV fluid is basically salt water. So it, to me, it has a little salty taste to it, but it actually is really I, good. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's not, it doesn't taste salty to me. It depends on, they have several different flavors. Um, I like the lemon lime. Um, it's not salty, but um, when you're sweating, you're losing a lot of electrolytes. You're losing a lot of salt in your system. So if you, if you, if you can handle it and I, I exercise a lot and I, I sweat a lot, so I don't, you know, a little extra salt, does not affect me. No, but no. Um, yeah. So yeah, but but I yeah, yeah. The main thing, yeah, stay hydrated. Hydration is uh, key. So cool thing. I know you said you had you use bottled water. Do you have also gain? I also yeah, I drink this and Gatorade. Gatorade, okay. But I also, I also eat as well. I always make sure I eat at the at the gig. So what yeah. what do you usually do when someone asks what you want to eat? Do you usually go for uh, like yeah. Adrian E says the filet mignon or like Mikey Mike says uh, Hershey bar. Um, what do you usually go for? Do you go for one of the entrees or do you say, Hey, I want something yeah. more basic or do you have any kind of, you know, anything you try to say, Hey, no, don't worry about it. I won't eat. Yeah. I always, I always eat what they have. Cause it usually is like a buffet style. And most of the time it's like country, like Southern, uh, country style cooking most of the time even grits N not grits um no grits uh, more breakfast um so you're eating more like barbecue and fried some yeah fried barbecue foods. yeah yeah i have it, it, I have like it in my contract i i got i got fed up with these venues that give us the crappy vendor meals oh yeah now i have it in my i finally now i have it in my contract that i need to be fed the exact same meal that the guests are fed so I, I want to see a show of hands, and, and this has happened to me more than once. The vendor meal that I'm sure they're charging the bride and groom an arm and leg for, which, as one photographer put it, told Tracy, I can't believe the sandwich is wet yet dry, soggy yet dry at the same time. A sandwich, a bag of some kind of like sun chips or potato chips or something like that, and maybe a an apple or something in a plastic container, kind of like something you get from Subway almost. Um, who here has had that happen to them? That venue gave that to them as a vendor meal. It's just a show of hands. We've there. never, yeah. I've had crappy meals, but we've never had sandwiches. I've never even heard of that in SoCal. Oh, well, I, I don't think anybody knew that. Oh, uh, we well, I had sandwiches before at my brother and sister in law's wedding celebration, and it was. I've never, I've never not gotten a hot meal. I've, oh. I've always gotten at least a hot meal. It may have been crappy, but I've always gotten a hot meal. I don't know. Maybe they just don't do sandwiches here. Maybe that's not our thing. But I've always at least had something prepared. Yeah, and we did. And we, yeah, we catered from Dagwoods, which is what a lot. It was. Oh, yeah, well, you, you, you ate the same thing the guests ate, so they had sandwiches there. You had the same sandwich. Yeah, I had well, sandwich. Else had. yeah. that's a new. That, that, that's a new change because I was tired of this one. It's it's one company. There's a catering company here that makes really great food, but all the vendors hate them because they give them such crappy vendor meals. And finally, well, what do you usually get for, other photographer. What do you usually give you for so a for, vendor meal? It's like a piece. So I did one wedding. Uh, it was like a full fajita bar. It looked delicious. Smelled amazing. And then they take us to the back. Oh, your meals are back there. And it's like this dried chicken that's not seasoned, uh, some asparagus sticks and like a salad that, you know, is not great. And 
after that, like I talked to a photographer friend who had done a bunch of events with that uh, catering company. She said, yeah, just put it in your contract, make the couple pay for it and they'll serve you. It's, it's the couple that's paying for it. They don't like the couple doesn't know what the vendor meal is. And it's kind of shady that like, you know, if one of us were to complain to the couple, I'm sure the couple would be pissed at the catering company. This is what I paid 60 bucks for is a piece of dried chicken and some asparagus sticks, you know, but who's going to tell the couple, right? So it's it's kind of shady. I'm sure, I'm sure the one wedding that we did that we had the vendor meal, which was the soggy yet dry sandwich, um, which I think I'd ask Tracy, I think it was like chicken or turkey. I like some kind of like a whole grain bread and it had like packs of ketchup uh packs of mustard ketchup mayonnaise in there i'm like waiting to ketchup for this for but whatever and then i remember the sun chips which i'm not a fan for and i only thing i ate there was the, i ate the apple, the apple I ate, like, okay, fruit fresh uh, fruit i'll eat that i love sun chips <laughs> i, I do if you're in there i was like here hunter here's my sun chips eat the you can have these <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not too picky when it comes to food. I mean, I I'll say here you go, sir. You can have my sandwich then. <laughs> I'll eat pretty much anything. <laughs> so, Dwayne, what about you? What do you usually do when people say, "Hey, you know, uh, we're gonna have food"? Uh, do you eat? Do you not eat? If so, if you eat, do you just eat what everyone else does, or do you get something different, or what do you usually do? I usually bring a snack because I have severe um, food allergies, so I can't eat like wheat, dairy, seafood and things with eggs in it. So I don't want to risk it. So I just just politely tell them I can't eat it. I just bring my own something to snack on to get me through the night. Yeah, you know, there was actually one time, yeah, there was one time I DJed a school event and after the gig, I didn't eat at that gig. I went to McDonald's. We got yeah, some we, Mickey D's. I probably, well, probably all have gone to a fast food restaurant afterwards because we didn't eat all night. And it's like, you're hungry. And it's like, What's open at uh, one o'clock in the morning? Oh, McDonald's is open 24 hours. I guess I'll stop there and get a couple of hamburgers. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm more than guilty of that. You know, that, that's that's that, that's <laughs> like, yeah, it happens. You know, come home, eat some French fries, have a couple of hamburgers. My dog loves French fries, so she's always over there like, ooh, give me some fries. So, yeah, I share my fries with my dog and uh, Trace and I are over, you know, eating a couple McDonald's hamburgers. So that's the fun part. Um Let's see here. Uh, Mikey Mike says, I have in my contract, I'm served the same meal as a guest, or there's an extra charge of $125. Oh. So that's go. what he has in his contract. And then he say, never drink alcohol during an event. You know, that is very true. You should never, never have a drink during an event. Uh, that can lead to bad things. And only that, just think about this. Internet, everything lasts forever, just like the show hopefully lasts forever on the internet. Uh, people take pictures and they put it out there. Don't admit you know, to anything. <laughs> and you, you see people put you know pictures up on like sites like you know uh bad DJ subs or whatever. It, you know, we there's more story behind the stuff. I always say, you know, there, we there's questions I have, but you can't ask the person who actually did it. And that's the thing is that, you know, people don't do that. People don't go, well, maybe there's a reason behind it. But if someone sees you DJing and you got a bottle of, of beer in your hand, whatever beer you drink or whatever, or an alcohol beverage, uh, people are like, oh, yeah, that DJ drinks all the time. Some people are equate that, oh, yeah, it's a cool DJ. He drinks. Most people are going to say, oh, well, that person's probably drunk at my wedding or at my party. So I definitely would say make sure that, you know, you don't have anything alcoholic or anything you need to look like it. DJ yeah. Brindley, what about you? What do you do for food? I saw you munching on some food. Hopefully, it was from your drive-in that you DJ at, uh, and you had. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, was that a <laughs> bottle of Mexican Coke by any chance? Uh, no, that was a uh, cherry Coke, no sugar, zero, whatever it is. Ah, okay. Yeah, that was part of the original deal. Like when I DJ the car night, because I didn't ask for a lot of money for it, but it was more for me and the kid because we like going there, and so couple of burgers, you know, dinner for me and the kid and some cash. And that's cool enough. But when it comes to weddings and all that, I get, you know, knock on wood because of the venues I'm at a lot. Um, celebrations in Cargill. They know for a get, you know, if you're DJing there, you're already included in it. They don't have vendor meals per se. And at Cargill, everything's plated. So, Couples will ask me months out, what would you like? And they'll give me my three options. 
And I'm not a prick. I will go for the cheaper of the three options presented to me. Unless you're presenting me with fish, then I'm going for the fish right out the gate. But at like celebrations and a couple of the other venues I'm at a lot, more often than not, they include X number of meals for all the vendors already. And that's already tacked into the overall price. And there are some uh, caterers I, you know, because of in my details that I'm, you know, online with all of my couples, I can go and start, you know, make my calls with my caterers and everything a week or two out. See, so, you know, some DJs hate it. Are you guys releasing tables or not? I want to know that. So if it's going to fall on me, I'm ready to go with that. I've got it in my notes and all of that. But so I know what they expect from me and what I'm getting from them in return, so to speak. But more often than not, a lot of my couples are always asking what I want. And I will say, and some of you guys may not have may, may or may not have experienced it. Once I really started raising my prices and pushing the all white and the fancier setup were, and the price point with that, I can't think of any couple that hasn't asked me what I want to eat or has said, make sure you get dinner since my prices went over two G's. But it's also the venues I'm at as well. So in my opinion, it's a win-win and I'm always ready to eat. Do I bring snacks with me? Yes, I do. Just in case anything runs behind or, you know, for some odd reason, it's nine o'clock and I'm hungry again. Plus, I do bring uh, anywhere from two to four uh, energy drinks to every one of my gigs, depending how many hours I'm on site. The average is about three energy drinks per day sometimes four plus a pot of coffee. So by the time we get to that dance portion of the night, I, my energy isn't falling after dinner, so to speak, and I'm kind of jacked up and ready to make the night go. So does, so your, heart that's my does your heart explode <laughs> before or after the uh, bouquet and the garter toss? Because four or five energy drinks, you know, I, I may have one and that's it for all day. You know, and I don't drink coffee. So that's that's that that right there. And what um, I know you have your favorite energy drink. What is your energy drink, sir? Um, I'm presently repping three in one energy drink, uh, made here in La Crosse, Wisconsin. And, and what is, they what is their what what is their uh did a YouTube channel or do they have a website or anything you can share? Uh three and one on Insta, Facebook, three n one energy drink on Facebook, Insta, TikTok. But yeah, I get you know my stash from them and consume it pretty heavily. So, and I'm assuming if I wasn't getting you know my cases per month, I probably wouldn't put as many down. But I definitely, when it comes time, you know, like being prepared for our events, after those first dances, I want to have as much energy as I possibly can, so I can you know relay that in the music I'm playing and mixing and hopefully get people to do what I, we want them to do, which is have a, I mean, a great dance floor or a great reception. I push for having a rager where something silly happens, but you know, that's just my personal, what I do at a reception. Other DJs are a little bit more reserved, but I like being jacked up and pumped to make that happen. So three and three and one on Instagram is a company that you deal with all the time, and I yep. take it that up there in Wisconsin, they have a, a, these gas stations called Quick Trip. I'm sure Quick Trip probably has them spelled out with fully out, not the okay. QT. QT is down south, and actually QT is coming here to Chicago. And there's two now, and one more being built in just a mere five minute ride from my house. So QT is coming here to Chicago. Uh, maybe we'll get some other cool gas stations like Sheets and so forth and so on. Uh, but Quick Trip in Wisconsin, I've been to them. Uh, they are you, very you only need Quick Trip. That's all you need is Quick Trip. Casey's? Just Quick yeah. Trip. Casey's been eleven. No, Casey's. You can. Yeah. Iowa can have their Casey's. It's fine. You only need Quick Trip. Just Quick Trip. Seven Eleven does not hold a feather. I don't know. It's There's just Quick Trip, dude. Dude, you gotta come. You gotta come over here. I got, I got a Seven Eleven by me, that is like five times the size of a normal Seven Eleven. Has Amico gas pumps in the front, uh, and it has a taco restaurant inside of it. 
And then is the Casey's here are way bigger than the old Casey's because the fact that they're the new, they actually have like a diesel island for big trucks. Okay. And then they have a big C store. They only just do their pizza. They do much more than that. Uh, kind of like Quick Trip, but bigger. Because the biggest Quick Trip uh, is in, I want to say Racine. They just built their biggest. I think so. Trip. And um, it it's the, the Casey's here are bigger than that. Because again, I, I have a couple right by me and they're they're pretty not as big as Bucky's. If you guys been to Bucky's, I know cool things been to oh, Bucky's. And we have one in Florence. Yeah, we yep. I, we have one near us in Florence, South Carolina. And yeah, it's pretty Bucky's I, I like Bucky's, Bucky's are huge. So I love Bucky's. Oh yeah. Bucky's I, I mean I huge. honestly I live off of because of my club gigs there's not much open in a lot of these play towns I'm in, like Wassa, Stevens Point, even Green Bay for that matter. There's lacrosse included. There's nowhere to go eat at three in the morning bar time when you're all my craps in the van, my decks put up. Let's roll home or roll to the hotel. You've got Quick Trip, and that's it. I mean, if you if you look at my you know my receipts for an entire year, at least. 90 80% of all my meals and all of my gas pretty much is all from Quick Trip. It's kind of unreal. Yeah, and uh Mikey Mike's talking about uh they have Turkey Hill and Sheets. Sheets is another huge uh gas oh, station yeah. uh out east that uh I've seen them uh when I was in uh, DC and their gas stations they're basically a fast food <laughs> restaurant that happens to serve gasoline. They have High quality stuff, high quality food, and of course they have a bunch of gas pumps too. <laughs> and you know, Bucky's. I will say this, and you can buy it on Amazon. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. Um, is the Beaver Nuggets? Uh, I've never been to a Bucky store, but I heard about them, and I found them on Amazon. The Bucky Nut, Bucky, the Bucky's uh, Beaver Nuggets. They are um, very much the uh, uh, addictive food. <laughs> I have to keep them away from me because I will eat a whole bag if I have to, <laughs> but I don't want to. Then that's not that's not good. Have it here a little bit here and there. Mikey Mike says he loves their hot dogs at Sheets. Uh, again, I, I, when I saw the stuff at Sheets, Sheets has high quality food, and I think uh, QT and Casey's they're going to battle out for that kind of thing because that's what the C stores here are going to. Uh, so again, wow. with the food and stuff like that, when we go through things and I, again, we all have our, you know, drink, bringing, bringing water, kind of like Jeff says, he brings water and, um, you know, uh, like a uh, cool thing also says he brings bottled water. Dwayne brings some uh, snacks for himself because he's dietary restrictions. Uh, Matt makes sure he gets a dinner with the, uh, the same food that the people eat, you know, the caterer. Uh, Brantley is getting most of the couple saying yes. It is kind of similar to all of us, and it's one of the things that we have to just look at. Go, what's best for us, and communicating that with your with your client is an important thing. Doesn't matter if it's a corporate client, a school, or a a, a couple, or even if someone's having a birthday party. You're doing a birthday party. A lot of times, people are like, "Oh yeah, come here, enjoy." You know, they usually have something. Um, but that's the important thing is also communicating what you prefer. Uh, I also like, like Jeff, I like Dwayne. I have uh, with us um, little protein bars. So if there's food there that I'm not going to eat, because I'm also a picky eater. Uh, <laughs> and again, I can't have alcohol. So I have to watch what I eat. Um, a lot of times. Yeah, I'll have hey, that. Buddy, those um, protein bars came into play just recently at a school gig where they had a, um, uh, a, sandwich truck out in the parking lot and they gave me a coupon for a sandwich so i waited till everybody cleared out and because you had to go out order it and wait for it to be made so I'm, I'm like waiting for everybody all the kids in the administration to go through and then when they all got done then then i threw a long song on five minute song and went out they were closing the truck sorry we're done for the night yeah, of food truck. <laughs> so yeah, I'm like, okay, yeah. sorry to bother you. So I came in. I'm like, I uh, handed the uh, coupon back to the lady that uh, that hired me. I'm like, yeah, they're closing up. She was upset, but there's nothing they could do. So you know what? 
protein bar got me through the night. What's your what's your one favorite in, protein uh, stick bar? One in your car. What's your oh, uh, what's your favorite one, there, Jeff? Uh gosh, man, you know my, my wife buys all the groceries in the house, <laughs> so I have no clue what the names are. I I you know, and and they're different. She buys different things because I mean, it's I got two two boys that are um you know thirteen and fifteen, so they eat like there is no tomorrow. And uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it changes weekly. So it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so Costco is your friend, I take it then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kirkland's got some good stuff. Yeah. If, if you like, I'll, I'll tell you a little secret. If you like the Costco hot dogs out front, you know, they give a hot dog and a you know, glass of, of pop for like what a buck 50 or whatever it is. You like those hot dogs? They sell in packages in the uh, fresh food area, so you can get to pick up the same hot dog, buy some buns, and have the hot dog at home, grill on the grill or wherever you want to cook them, and have those same great hot dogs. Um, and they're I actually a pretty decent hot dog. Costco pizza is good. Good old greasy cheese pizza is excellent. <laughs> And that's the thing they they have that there as convenience, and they don't make a dime on it. They actually lose money on. It. But they look at taking care of their customers, and that goes back to customer service. That's why people who go to Costco love going to Costco because that right there is one of the big things, customer service. And you don't need a Costco card to order from their pharmacy or their bakery. So if you want to get a sheet cake or a cake from the bakery, you can order a sheet cake or a cake from the bakery. Or the pharmacy, you can get medicine from the pharmacy. You don't need a Costco card for that. The only thing you need a Costco card if you buy everything else. So you want to buy that five-gallon bucket of uh, Jack Daniels they have there or that uh, five-gallon bucket of mayonnaise, then you need a Costco card. <laughs> but other than that, if you go to the bakery and you order a cake, don't need a card for that, and you don't need a card for the pharmacy. And uh, the food court, too, you don't need a card for that. But it's one of the things, it is worth the money to get a card for Costco or Sam's Club, either way you want to do it. But they do have some great deals and steals there sometimes. Um, yeah. Dwayne, what's yeah, the... we have Sam's Club. And speaking of Sam's Club, I think that's where we got my first PA speaker from Sam's Club. And, and it was given to me for Christmas five years ago. So they have a lot of, kind of, and I haven't had a Costco hot dog in years. Oh, man. Come on. You got to go have one. You, now you just got to go there just to have one. And we, I know we have, one, thing... we have one in Myrtle Beach. We have one in Myrtle Beach, but I think it's under construction last time I checked. I'm okay. Not sure. If if you guys want to make a cool thing happy, I would definitely say Dunkin' Donuts gift card for him would be a great thing to oh, have. Oh, yeah. Because he loves your coffee. Dunk, yeah. Oh, yeah. I actually had a Dunkin' Donuts coffee earlier today. My mom brought me one. It was pretty good. So if you if you want if you want to send cool thing a gift card a cool uh, Dunkin' Donuts gift card he will definitely use that. <laughs> so I got to ask here. Okay, with show of hands, who here is Dunkin' Donuts for coffee? <laughs> Dunkin' okay. sucks. I know cool thing. Starbucks Dunkin is garbage. Starbucks. Well, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I like all. I, I support small businesses. We have one here called Phil's Coffee. That's a, a local California chain. They're phenomenal. Uh, they actually have unique creations instead of just iced vanilla coffee. Oh, there I you hate go. Starbucks. I, also, I, I love I, Starbucks. I and, and, then, and, then, cream. and then finally, who who likes a different kind of coffee? Like either from, again, like Salsa is a small business or could be 7-Eleven or anything like that. Who drinks that kind of quick, quick, quick trip? I drink diner coffee. Like every time we go to a diner, I would drink their coffee. You know, I'm not coffee. I'm not a coffee fan. I don't drink coffee. Uh, I'll give you guys that. a. I'll give you guys a quick story, real quick. When Tracy and I first started dating, we we're downtown Chicago at Lincoln Park um, to see a light festival at Lincoln Park Zoo, and she went to Starbucks and got a mocha, and it got down to the bottom, and she's like, "Ooh, this is really chocolatey and really sweet. You should try this. You'll like it." I took a swig of it. And I'm like, oh, my God, the most bitter thing in the world. So I've never been a coffee drinker. Even after that, I hate it even worse. Like the smell of it. Coffee does smell great. Just don't drink it. <laughs> so you guys who are coffee fans out there and coffee fiends, and I see a mic out there yeah. saying Dunkin' Donuts all the way. You guys are coffee fans, oh, yeah. coffee fiends. Make sure you guys enjoy it. But keep yourself hydrated. Rigor water and electrolytes are very important. So make sure you look at stuff that has good balance of electrolytes and make sure everything's safe. 
Um, yeah, for flavor, for flavor, I drink. Adrian E says local. Yeah, Adrian E says local craft coffee, which there's a lot of great local coffee places here. Start uh, Speedway number two, Speedway gas stations. Oh, Speedway, um, yeah. Speedway, uh, Starbucks yeah. number three, Duncan number four. So that's his top four. He didn't pick a top five. Um, hey, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one uh, that you'll be surprised at, but has great coffee. And I don't buy coffee outside my house uh, hardly ever. Um, but McDonald's has really good black, just black coffee. Just plain black coffee. Well, I used to drink my coffee with cream and Splenda. Really good. So your cream and Splenda and your uh, your black coffee then, uh, Jeff, if you get coffee from McDonald's? Oh, yeah. I, I, I have my uh, large mug of black coffee every morning when I get up right here in the house. And, you know, I can probably count on one hand how many times I've bought uh, Starbucks or a, a premium type of coffee in my life. I just don't buy coffee during the day. You know, after I drink it in the morning, I mean, you know, it's just, it's just me. And well, I well, I usually meet uh, Tracy. I meet people at, at Panera and Starbucks, and sometimes they drink coffee there. Sometimes they drink like the one thing I do like about Panera. Uh, we belong to the uh, the beverage club, which you get the free fountain drinks. So I get uh, Buble or Bubbles <laughs> or Mikey Bubbles drink or whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> the carbonated water that's lemon or lime uh, flavoring uh, from, uh, from Pepsi. And then um, I usually drink that because I, I'm not a one, I'm not a Pepsi fan. And two, um, I just try to keep away from the sugars, you know, and then, you know, getting carbonated water with some natural flavoring. That's, that's fine. But again, if you're drinking coffee it, in Jeff, do you ever try the iced coffee from McDonald's? You just basically it's a black coffee on ice. No, no, I'm not a big iced coffee fan. Okay. What about you, uh, DJ Brantley? Are you an iced coffee fan, or are you just regular black coffee, or what you usually get in your coffee? Well, uh, I prefer cream in my coffee. Oh, yeah. Hot or cold, doesn't matter. More often than not, I definitely prefer hot coffee up until about noon. And then once we get to the noon hour and I get something in my stomach that's a munchy, like a muffin or like a peanut butter sandwich – then I'll kick over to soda or energy drinks. And then probably somewhere in the early evening, I may want another coffee or an iced coffee just to get that, you know, coffee flavor back in me, so to speak. I don't know. I I live off of energy drinks for some reason. They're my favorite things in the world. So so, so we know right now that if you're looking drink, to buy yeah. people gift cards, cool thing is Dunkin' Donuts. Jeff is McDonald's for McCafe. Uh, DJ Brantley is quick trip in Wisconsin for his energy drinks. So he gets three and one. Uh, uh, Matt has his coffee uh, place out there in California. Finally, Mr. Dixon, what is your, uh, do you drink coffee? If not, what is your uh, power potion that you like to drink? I just like to drink fruity juice on um, juices, like your fruit punches and grapes. And red pop, yeah. I don't drink coffee. I don't. I don't either. Um, I will tell you one thing. I do like drinking. Um, it's called Green Machine, and I want. I can't remember the name of it. I, I want to say Naked Juices. It looks like it looks like green, like almost like uh, green goo, almost. But it's 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 chew. It's it's Ooh, juice. Thanks. Um, it's uh kale, pineapple, banana, apple. It has a bunch of juices in there. It's it looks weird. It's natural juice. It's uh fresh. It's uh, it's cold pressed, and it's um it actually is really really great. I drank it. My granddaughter looks at me and goes, "That looks disgusting." And she tries. She's like, "Oh, that tastes really good." I'm like, yeah, I I drink that. You know, so I get you know vitamins and so forth, so on, and it has some vegetables in it. So you are getting a help in the vegetables without having you know eat a whole entire plate of you know of whatever vegetable you like. So with that said, one other thing, Adrian E says hot coffee ninety eight percent of the time. He is a hot oh, coffee yeah. fan, and he's again. Yeah, I like more. Oh, I, he he does. Duncan is on his list. So again, if you're going to send him a a, a yeah. gift card, Adrian E, he likes uh, local craft coffee. Oh, Krispy Kreme coffee. Anyone here like Krispy Kreme coffee? Yeah. Krispy oh, yeah. Kreme. I know uh, Krispy Adrian's Kreme. got Krispy Kreme not far from him. Uh, I don't know if that's on his list or that is a place where he goes for coffee. Um, 
oh, here, do you guys charge for uh, for benefits? Um, I'm not sure what that you mean by that, Mike. But uh, you can leave it in a comment in the video on YouTube. Ask a little bit more in depth on that one. I'm not sure what you mean by that uh, question. But we're going to have to wrap it up here for this week. We'll be again here back next week, next Tuesday night. And um, and uh, Adrian just said, just donuts when they're hot and the hot light is on. Then he goes and grabs some nice Krispy Kreme donuts. Other than that, guys, oh, no. have a good night. Thank you all for tuning in. And don't forget to smash that like button. Make sure you also you follow the channel and tell a friend. Tell a friend about the show. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to be a, a stranger on the channel. And please watch us on YouTube or watch us on Twitch. We want to hear what you guys think. So comments, critiques, criticisms down below. Uh, oh, for benefit shows like concert and car wash, uh, car shows and school benefits, you guys charge for benefit. Um, depends. Yeah, I don't, we'll, we'll, we'll keep that for no, next week. I do it for free. I do it for we'll free. free. But we'll keep that for the next week's double. show. Especially we'll ask that question next week's show and see where we go with that. So, gentlemen and ladies out there, have a good night. Thank you all. Peace out. Thank <laughs> you.